Hey everyone, so adding and subtracting rational expressions with, oops, I don't know what that was, with common denominators. Before we get into this, uh, let's just talk for a second about adding and subtracting fractions, because rational expressions in general are shown as fractions, and especially when you're manipulating them in the type of way that you would in some sort of Algebra 2 class in order to, you know, get your grades or whatnot. Um, so, from here, if we have, say, one, well, it's not, color's not looking great on this background, one third plus three thirds. Now, in this case, I have a common denominator. The part on the bottom is the same. So all I'm going to do is keep the common denominator and then whatever, add or subtract uh, the numerator. So one plus three gives you four thirds. Um, if it was 12 fifteenths minus three fifteenths, same thing. If it's add subtract, you have common denominator, keep it, and then you'll just do a little bit of subtraction work. So 12 minus 3 is 9. And you may even have to reduce it. They may want this as a mixed number. They may want this, well, 3 goes into both of these, so they want it to be 3 fifths, whatever. But as long as the denominator is the same, you can just solve them as normal, uh, normal add subtract relationships. And that's what we're going to talk about here. I'll make another one about un, uh, unlike denominators, but we'll get to that later. That's for another time. Anyway, so in this case, um, I end up with, actually this is a question that's a little bit, okay, this one's good, never mind. I thought this was further along. I have a common denominator here, I'm ready to go. Now the issue here that you have to see is that when you're doing a subtraction, it's not just subtracting the x, it's subtracting the entire term. So what I would suggest is somewhere off to the side of your paper, you do this. Treat it like it's a negative 1. And then distribute it out, and you'll get negative 1x plus 6y. That's what I'm going to combine. So this just becomes um, really, and you don't have to write out this step if you're doing it on your paper, plus negative 1x plus 6y. If you do that, it causes you to reduce the chances that you'll do that one thing that everybody does when they make a mistake on these, which is that you forget to change the sign on the 6y. And you'll, make, you'll be minus and you'll end up getting it wrong. So from here, um, it just sort of breaks out into one big problem. x minus 2y plus negative 1x plus 6y. So the numerator, all I'm doing is combining like terms. And I always hated plus negative, so I'm just going to get rid of this because it's the same thing anyway. So I'm going to make one line on top for x's, two lines for y's, whatever you need to do to visually see that what the like terms are. So in this, I have 1x minus 1x, so 1x minus 1x actually eliminates it, so I'm left with uh, nothing that I can work with there, so no more x's. And then I end up with negative 2y plus 6y, so that would be 4y over 8x to the third. Now, we're almost done. You might remember that we reduced a portion earlier when we reduced 9 fifteenths to 3 fifths. Same thing here. The y, there's only one y, there's only one x on the bottom, so there's nothing we can do with those. But we can reduce 4 and 8 because 4 goes into 8 two times and it goes into 4 goes into 4 once. So I'm going to say 1y or just y over 2x to the third. That's the first part of that one. So for another one, even though that might be the most advanced one on this. Uh, in this case, I've got my common denominator. Things are going great. I have my common denominator. Sorry. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and write the numerator out. It's a addition question. It's not subtraction. So I don't have to worry about that. Combining like terms on top. 5x and 5x would be 10x, of course. You know that, 5 y, minus 5y over 15x squared. Now, here's the thing. You can't break the, I mean, to have any integrity in terms of the process, you don't want to break each one of these out. You, if you have a common denominator, or sorry, a common factor in all three of them, then you can reduce. But if it's not in, it's only in two of them, you can't. For instance, the x and x squared. You can't, well, I'm going to mark out an x here, I'm going to get rid of this x, and then just leave this term alone doesn't work like that. You have to do all three unless you uh, do a bit of a split, but you'll end up almost back in the same situation that you were in before. So if it's not in all of them, don't do it. But in this case, they all have five in them. 
So I'm just going to reduce them all by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, so I end up with 2x. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so minus 1y, or minus y, whatever. And then 15x squared, well, 15 divided by 5 is 3, so I end up with 3x squared. And I may eliminate this negative 1 here so you, you don't have to see it, and you just see minus y. So 2x minus y over 3x squared. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, no big deal. This one's a little bit, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, ugly, I guess. I don't know, who knows. Anyway, m plus 3 minus m plus 5. Once again, it's that situation where you'll probably want to go over somewhere on the side of your paper and do the distributive property. So negative m minus 5. And I'll just change this to plus now. So if I were to write this out, 3m plus 6 over m plus 3 minus m minus 5. So mark these dots. Combine like terms. 1m minus 1m is equal to no m. So there's no m's left here. Um, so I end up with negative 2 in my numerator and then 3m plus 6. Well, the 2 and the 6 would reduce, but this 3 messes that up. So this is the answer. That's done. There's always one thing standing in the way of it being perfectly nice how you'd want it to be. Here's another where it gets to be, uh, it looks a little bit more maybe advanced, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't look advanced at all, who knows. Uh, but anyway, uh, in this case I've got that negative 1 situation again. So I end up with negative 1 in minus 1. So n plus 5 minus n minus 1 over 2n squared minus 6n plus 4. So from here, 1 minus 1, so those cancel out. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2n squared minus 6n plus 4. Now, all the terms have at least 2 in them, so I can reduce all the terms by 2. And since I can reduce all of them by those number, that's what I'm going to do. So this reduces down to 2. 2 goes into 2 one time, so it just becomes n squared. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's minus 3n. And 4 divided by 2 is, of course, 2. So I end up with that right there. You know, not a huge big deal that no one could ever figure out. I think one more, and that is it for common denominators. And this is the one I'm going to work with. It's another minus question, so... Once again, my suggestion, and of course it's your life, so you choose how you go about doing it. I always think that the more you write down, the easier it's going to be, but that's just me. Maybe, who knows. So I'll sort of take 3r plus 5, put the minus 4r plus 3 on the back end there, and then I'll keep my common denominator because this whole section is about common denominators. So anyway... Um, I might make some marks on here to help me identify like terms. 3 minus 4 is, of course, negative 1, r, and then 5 plus 3 is 8. Remember, only combine based on the signs that are in front. This 3 doesn't know this negative is here, so don't try to pretend like it does. Um, and then 5 r squared minus 5. Now, there's nothing we can do here because, uh, like I said before, you have to have a uh, common feature in all of your components in order for you to be able to make any reduction here. And unfortunately, uh, the only thing I can really do to make it more visually appropriate, I guess, is to get rid of the 1 in front of the R. Because there's, the 5 goes into both of these, but they don't go into 8, and definitely 1 doesn't do anything, and they don't have anything else in common. So that's it uh, as far as this goes. And by the way, you couldn't reduce each one anyway. You'd have to figure out the 5r squared minus 5 goes into something on the top. But that's a whole other issue for a whole other day. So uh, that's it as far as this is concerned. If you have a common denominator, step 1, you know, if you need to do the distributive because you're subtracting, do that. Step two, make sure that you combine any like terms. And step three, look to simplify. It's really not as complicated as it seems. It's just a lot of uh, did I fall through and all the things I need to fall through on.